Merry Christmas to you all and we are here to bring you the first story of the day here on United Matters channel. Guys, news is coming in very, very slowly. The flow of the news is not all that enticing as it's supposed to be, but we are trying to see to it that we gather up from our sources to see to it that we bring you the latest news and information as far as Manchester United is concerned. Now today we are talking about Jawa Felix race hits up. That's it. United is really battling up with a certain rival in the Premier League. Linderoff triumphs, obviously. He is one of those that has really ended the year 2022 with a big smile on his smiles or on his cheeks. Then the other story is all about David De Gea telling us how United has managed to cope up and perform to the levels where they are. Smash the like button, comment and share. And if you're totally watching us for the very first time, lower right bottom corner, that's the place to be. Smash the subscription button that is Smash the subscription button for smashing it, hit the notification bell that will enable you to get notified every time I upload a video onto this channel. And that is Rokani, sorry, United Matters channel. And guys, for your information, you've heard me talking of Rokani Media Football. If I told you want to see me broadcast news for other teams, you can as well go there and subscribe on the Rokani Media Football. You can find me there. Loads of stuffs are always there. Now, Joe Felix came out and indicated that he no longer wants to be part of the Atletico Madrid team when Diego Simeone is the manager of that team. Obviously, the team and the board decided to go with Jao, sorry, to, to, to decide with the manager. And they said, Yao Felix can find a way out of Atletico Madrid. After selling Cuna, you know, Matthias Stune, the Brazilian to Wolverhampton Wanderers, 50 million pounds loan with an option to buy in the summer. Now they are looking to put, to put Yao Felix to exit out of Atletico Madrid if, if it, a viable buyer comes in with the right, with the right proposal. Now we've been told by by L Le One Sports that the race of the, the race to sign Joe Felix is between Arsenal and Manchester United. Final stages of negotiations with George Mendes have begun. Now United is one of those teams that really want two more centre forwards. That's it. Two more centre forwards are wanted by Manchester United, and they are really working hard to see to it that they sign in Cody Gapko and Yao Felix. That's it. Now, today, it has really come to our notice that even Arsenal is interested in this player. Why is Arsenal interested? Arsenal is interested because they lost Gabriel Jesus to injury. He's expected to return on the 1st of March, maybe, or 25th of Feb. So there is a huge virtue and they believe he is the pinnacle of everything that Arsenal has achieved this season. So as they want in, as they go in for Mukalo Modric, they want a certified centre forward in the names of Jao Felix. For United, they went in all for him in the summer. They paid, they made a bid of 90 million euros and it was turned down by Atletico Madrid. Now it looks like United are really back, meaning that the moment they made what we call a bid of 90 million euros, that means they had already held talks with the player and the agent, who happens to be George Mendes, that has worked lots of business with Manchester United, that has seen very many players' destinations end at Manchester United. Way back from Ronaldo, Nani, I think, Anderson, very many huge players. He has really seen his their destinations end at Manchester United, all arrive at Manchester United. So... To me, I believe United has an age in this deal, if at all they're 100% interested in it, because it is really important for us to go in and get in Jao Felix. If we want to go on and compete and compete for the title this season, um, being specific, compete for the title this season, the Premier League title, the Carabao Cup, FA Cup, and... Um, UEFA Europa League, we need Cody Gapko and Yao Felix. You add those two to the front line of Manchester United, obviously, we are fired up like never before. <laughs> That's it. We are fired up like never before because Yao Felix plays in all the four attacking positions of the pitch. He can play as a central attack midfielder. He can play as a right attack midfielder. 
left attacking midfield and can also lead the line as a number nine that is Yao Felix for you and mem memorably you know what he did to, to us in the Champions League tie that we are in last season of the Champions League he netted that one goal in Spain then Elanga leveled the game when they came at Old Trafford obviously he knocked us out with that one goal that he scored in the dying minutes to make it one nil and the aggregate was two nil with them having four points and United having one so Atletico went ahead to knockout United courtesy of your Felix and Eric Ten Hag is an admirer of the player he really loves him and that's why United went in and put in a bid for him that was rejected by a team known as Atletico Madrid now final stages of negotiations with George Mendes have begun so George Mendes is is a genius at negotiating such deals I don't believe that this deal can be equivalent for 100 million pounds or euros in the winter transfer window i believe it can only be equivalent to that amount of money in the summer because teams always spend huge in the summer but in the general transfer window it's hard but if at all there is need for us to go in and buy a player like yao felix right now and interest is shown and united is willing to put there an option an option to buy that makes miss melerat of the new owner already in and putting his hand in there is an invisible hand that is in these transfers of Manchester United when you look at the charisma that United sources are releasing their links of transfers at it shows you that they are not alone there is a high level of knowledge and support from an invisible financial hand that has come in with big junks of money because look at the players we are linked at frank de jong enzo fernandez judy bellingham now yao felix you get that quality quesido all those players none of them is less 80 million euros meaning that hope has given hope is back at manchester united as eric can have confirmed to us that the ceo told him the selling of the club means more investment and it looks like the investment has already been lined up and the owner wants to know what united needs to go on and do in the general transfer window to see it that whenever by the time he takes it over in march they can go on and do the needful to go on and buy players in january because in march it's very hard to turn around your season if at all you have not bought in the general transfer window we saw it that teams which bought in january found themselves in a better position last season you saw tottenham hotspur qualifying for the champions league and i believe that spot was there for for tech for manchester united but because we never bought all the players that were fragnik recommended were not we are not we are not given to him by the board enzo fernandez julian alves uh, zakaria and none of those players was above 20 million euros by the by then those players were, were very cheap ekanji you saw you see he came in at man city at 17. Uh, michieli he went at 30 million euros in the summer meaning that in the january transfer window we'd have gone for cheap so very many huge players that we are in for but obviously we are never given a chance to sign them so i believe this time round it's going to be a different winter transfer window altogether united is going to go all up and battle for yao felix but that battle between arsenal i believe we have we have ever what it takes to win it i believe we have all what it takes to win that battle because we are a better side with money and with dealing with george mendes that's why united said that they don't want to see any of the sides hurt in between the mutual understanding of united and ronaldo's departure because they still need george mendes now i've been told by alex bernard that Arsenal and Manchester United are fighting a battle to get the signature of Yao Felix and have started the final discussions with George Mendes. And I believe we are going to win this battle. If United are, are going all in for this, we are going to win this battle. I believe Arsenal have no Portuguese player. Cedric Soares doesn't connect so much with the national team. And no Tavares, they are known at the national team. But when you look at United, they are having Dalo and Bruno Fernandes and that influence is going to be there hundred percent so i believe we can use those to go on and influence a deal of this guy to come to manchester united and i'm a hundred percent sure 
we will win the battle if at all ten hag and the board have decided to go all in for the player but them remember there were interests for him in the summer and that shows you that ten hag admires the player to see to it that he comes in through at the club known as manchester united after that let's go to victor linderov we've been told by seven football coming in from a side called a side called Sweden official. Victor Linderov is voted Swedish Defender of the Year for the fourth time in a row and the fifth overall. So he has been voted the, the Swedish footballer, sorry, Defender of the Year. I believe he deserves it. That's why I told you that a United, Harry Maguire, is in the fifth fiddle of the picking order of Eric Ten Hag as far as these defenders are concerned. If when Harry Maguire was fit and Rafael Veran was away, Eric Ten Hag opted for Verani. No, opted for Lisandro Martinez and opted for Lisandro Martinez and um, opted for Lisandro Martinez, opted for Lisandro Martinez and um, Linderov to play in his center half position. So that shows you how untrustworthy Ten Hag is with Harry Maguire. Meaning that being a third choice at United and you were swayed, that puts you in a better position to earn such privileges. Not so. And I'm happy for him and congratulations. Congratulations to Linder of Victor, who really played well in the game we won against Burnley. And secondly, he's expected to start on Tuesday alongside Rafael Verani or Lisandro Martinez when you're playing Nottingham Forest. And I believe. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come with that preview. I think tomorrow it's going to be the first video that is going to be up, be premiering on this channel. I think around lunchtime it's going to be up, and expect that to happen tomorrow. So congratulations to Linderov, and now let's get to the man himself, David De Gea. David De Gea is a player that came in United to replace Edwin van der Sar in 2011. Remember, Edwin van der Sar retired as a goalkeeper of United in 2011 after losing a Champions League finale to Barcelona. We lost 3-1 and he said, I'm putting up my gloves and hanging them up because I had promised my wife that at the age of 40, I would go back to Netherlands and we start staying there. Now, Ferguson tried to convince him to give him one more. He said no. Then he went in for David De Gea, 19-year-old from Atletico Madrid. He came in through looking naive with crosses, but later he became one of the best goalkeepers in the world. And in short stopping, he's one of the best. And that's why Eric Ten Hag wants to give him another long contract at United, keeping in mind that he is really improving on his ball distribution. Now, this goalkeeper has come out and really told us the secret behind the success of United ever since they lost to Brighton 2-1 and Brentford 6, sorry, and Brentford 4-0. In his own words, he said, we are playing well. There is a good team spirit. We are scoring goals, keeping clean sheets. We are on the right track. We are winning games. We need the team to be together to help each other. So, when you look at what United is all about and what Ten Hag has brought at the club, obviously, it's all about the winning mentality changing. And winning mentality means that you are going to win a game no matter what. But United has started to win with a certain sense of style and the rhythm never drops off. You saw even in the game of Burnley, having not played together for like one, one month, I think one, one month and uh, you can say six weeks. For six weeks, you saw the cohesion in between the players of United and the players of United that were the World Cup and those that stayed. And obviously, those at the World Cup looked sharp. Those that never went to the World Cup looked rusty. <laughs> That's it. But De Gea is confirming to us that there is a good team spirit. And that has been created by Eric Ten Hag by normalizing the dressing room. The dressing room is really calm. Egos of Ronaldo have been thrown out. He never entertained Paul Pogba to stay because he knew he was really a calamity in that dressing room. Then thirdly, he never allowed Lingard to stay because he knew he was one of the leaks and Dean Henderson that really used to put news out to the media. What is happening in the dressing room? Ronaldo was thrown out. Harry Maguire was really, was really was really shown that however much you are the captain, but being a captain, 
doesn't put you into my starting 11 that is Eric Ten Hag for you and he gave him a very hard job to do so when you look at the good team spirit all that is Ten Hag and McLaren because he came up with five strict rules that every player should respect and Ten Hag is a modern coach he knows what to do to keep your dressing room intact and that has really brought a good team spirit he said we are scoring goals obviously we are scoring goals look at how the season started in the first two games we couldn't we only scored one goal and it was not our goal it was an own goal by Brighton so we had a negative goal difference of 5 we go to Liverpool, we scored two. We went to Southampton, we scored one. We went to Leicester, we scored one. Arsenal came in at Old Trafford, three. We are put past them. Then we suffered a humiliating defeat against Man City. That was 6-3. Then we went into the weekend. We played Everton. 2-1, then we drew with Newcastle, then Spurs came in through, we beat Spurs, we drew with Chelsea, after drawing with Chelsea, <coughs> after drawing with Chelsea, went ahead to beat West Ham, after beating West Ham, we lost to Aston Villa, then we beat Fulham, that's when we went to what we call the World Cup break, but every game that we've been playing, has almost produced goals that's what he's talking about and the only goalless game we held was against Newcastle at Old Trafford and I believe it was because we never concentrated to see to it that we scored but chances were there for United to score and to finish you get then talking of keeping clean sheets obviously clean sheets have been kept I can really count for you clean sheets in the in the Premier League <laughs> against Leicester, 1-0, Southampton, 1-0, Spurs, 2-0, um, which other clean sheet have we kept? West Ham, 1-0, those are four clean sheets, um, which other clean sheet have we kept? Newcastle, those are five clean sheets that we kept under Eric Ten Hag. When you look at the UEFA Europa League, we've kept a clean sheet, a clean sheet against Shelf, yes, two clean sheets against Shelf, one against Sociedad, one against Omonia. Those are four clean sheets, and we considered in only two games. One at Old Trafford against Sociedad, and the other away at Omonia. So, clean sheets have been part of us. In the Carabao Cup, two games played, 4-2, the first one, no clean sheet kept, but you saw goals coming in through, we scoring four. Then, on Wednesday, we kept a clean sheet against Bandy. So, it shows you that what Deha is talking about is really on point. Then, he continued and said, we are on the right track. Obviously, we are, because we are just three points behind Tottenham Hotspur in, in the fourth position of the league. And Spurs are really having one game ahead of us. So, we are winning games. We need the whole team to be together to help each other. So, as a person that Eric Ten Hag sees as an important glue in his dressing room, he is talking about that we need to keep together to help each other. And you've seen this manifest in the back five of United. Dalo, David De Gea, Rafael Veran, Lisandro Martinez, Luxio Ol Malasia. The way they high five, eh? they chest, they chest, they, they hug with their chest eh? when they've defended very well and the way they celebrate when we've won it's something out of this world and I believe David Deja is really one of the points that we are on to this and I believe he pioneered this that we should celebrate every moment every moment when we are playing the game of football so let's see what United has for us on Tuesday as we take on Nottingham at Manchester United that is Old Trafford it's, it's supposed to be an easy game as I told you I'm returning I think I'll upload the preview tomorrow. It's going to be the first video around lunchtime because I know people are going to be out and most of you are going to wake up late. So I don't want to upload it early enough. I'll upload it later. Then you'll find it and watch it. Not so. So guys, thank you very much for watching in. Through your reactions to Joe Felix Ress heating up between United and Arsenal, I welcome in the comment section below. Who do you think is going to win this battle? Then Linderov named the Swede Defender of the Year for the fourth consecutive time in the row. What do you think about it? And obviously, tell me what you think about David De Gea's comments on his fellow colleagues at Manchester United and giving the reason as to why we are where we are, that good team spirit.
Do you agree with him? Yes or no in the comment section below. I sign out for now. See you later. Merry Christmas again. May the Almighty Lord bless you abundantly and may the birth of Jesus Christ bring you happiness and give birth to new things that you've always yearned for year in, year out from the Lord. I'm out.